Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my November reading wrap up, going up a little bit later than I wanted it to, but I still wanted to share about all the books I read in the month of November because I felt like I had a really good reading month. Before hopping in to the books I read and my mini reviews, if you're new here, hello, my name is Emily. This is McGinnis Mama, where you will find mostly bookish content. If that is something that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe. Yeah. To kick it off, Sam and I finished A Court of Mist and Fury, read A Court of Wings and Ruin, and A Court of Frost and Starlight in the month of November. We read most of Akamath in October, but finished it in November. We are quickly flying through, well, not quickly, I guess. We are rereading all of Sarah J. Mass's books before Crescent City 3 comes out at the end of January. We read all three of these in the month of November. We have a four star, a five star, and a four star from me. Rereads. I feel like you know what the Akatar series is about, and these are books two, three, and four, so I don't want to spoil anything. I was finishing up reading monster romances which I can link that vlog in the cards so I have a couple more that I finished at the beginning of November to share with you first I have wed to the minotaur by Eden Ember this is a very generous two stars um, it held my attention the whole time it was very entertaining but it was bad if you want more thoughts and specific examples you can check out my goodreads link down below or that reading vlog the writing itself was not good. The facts were always changing and to the point that it would like pull me out of the story. It was only a 80 page book and things just weren't making sense. One that I really enjoyed is The Hot Vampire Next Door Season 1. This is book one in the Midnight Harbor series by Nikki St. Crow. This is recommended to me by Steph Lyons and I definitely want to continue. This is available on Kindle Unlimited. And I gave this four stars. It was so fun. It's only 144 pages. I was reading short monster romances for the most part. And this says... It's near impossible to ignore my vampire neighbor, Bran Duval. In this town, it's like modern day, but paranormal creatures are known. And humans are given to certain vampire families basically as a juice box. And she, our main character is pledged to a different family. And there's some drama that's going on here. I really feel like this vampire romance, though it was short, really had some of those like darker or like thrillery kind of aspects to it that just made it really entertaining to read. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Next I have Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I gave this five stars on Goodreads, but like a four star in my heart. I think I read this one for Spookopoly. So once again, another reading vlog I can link up in the cards for you. This is such a good thriller. I still need to watch the movie. I gave it five stars for like execution. I was confused where it was supposed to be confused. I didn't know which characters to root for. I feel like the story was really well crafted, but I don't know if, like thrillers just are not my main genre. So this doesn't feel like a new, oh my God, I'm obsessed. This is my favorite book ever. Everyone must read it even though I'm the one that's late to reading it. You know what I mean? Where you have those books, like for me, that's fantasy or romance or fantasy romance. Some of those books I will feel so strongly and love so much I recommend all the time. And I don't know if this book is one of those. I feel like this is another book slash movie that everyone knows about. In this, we're following Nick and Amy on their fifth wedding anniversary and Amy has gone missing and I mean, the husband always does it, right? At least that's the narrative that we are told in the media. That's what the police believe. So we're going through this investigation. Where is Amy? Where did she go? Is she missing? Is she dead? And this is twisty. Now I have The Alchemist by Paolo Colo. Once again, read in my Spookopoly vlog. This was 
so profound for being such a small book. This is listed as both fantasy, self-help, and philosophy on Goodreads, and surprisingly, all those categories are correct. I gave this four plus stars. Once again, it doesn't feel like a five star favorite. In this, we are following a young boy as he discovers his purpose in life and reading omens. And I was love, love, loving the first like 60% of this book because it was exploring these topics of like your destiny. Oh, on the back it says to realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. And it was exploring that topic without being heavily religious for the first more than half. And then religion does kind of come into it towards the end, which was not my favorite. Like I felt this is a modern classic. This is the 25th anniversary edition. So it's not new by any means, but it was a more modern, fresh take on destiny, in my opinion, when God and religion didn't play a role. I was like, wow, this is a new way of looking at it. But then towards the end, it was like the old way of looking at it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Surprisingly profound, had a big impact, is definitely a short book. I recommend the audiobook as well, which is like four hours long, I believe. If you haven't read it, give it a try. Next, I read Laura Olympus Volume 4. I'm trying to catch up in the series, but now Volume 5 is out, so I'm not caught up once again. This is a Hades and Persephone webtoon, and they're turning into these graphic novels. I've been getting them from the library. The artwork is beautiful. I gave this one three stars. I'm wishy-washy on this series. I didn't love the first book. I was very confused on who the gods were, whose relations are to whom, because they're gods. So no one, like the parents don't look older than the children or anything like that. You just need to kind of like know who Zeus's children are, who, you know what I mean? And I don't have a great foundation on Greek mythology to know that. So I found those relationships really hard to get straight. Books two and three, volumes two and three, I enjoyed way, way more. And this one, I just feel like a lot didn't happen for a lot of pages. Like I didn't feel that certain relationships and dynamics were really moved forward that much or the plot. I just didn't love it. Lastly, a book I did really love is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is an older YA series that is having a resurgence and I'm so happy it is because I've never heard of these before the recent hype. This is like a YA criminal minds. We are following a group of teenagers who are gifted in abilities that are very helpful to the FBI. So they have been pulled from school and sent to kind of like an academy, but there's only like a handful of kids. So it's not like a true school setting, but they are there to learn and hone their special abilities. The main character in this one, Cassie, is a natural born profiler. She can really read people and they are going to be using these children and their specific abil abilities to help solve cold Hello, cases. Okay. This was non-stop fun. I loved this so, so much. I gave it four and a half or five stars and I can't wait to continue. I read through this so fast, like I could not put this book down. It was incredible. So those are all the books that I read in the month of November. I know we're quite a ways into December now, but if you can remember, uh, please let me know your top read for the month of November. I would love to check it out as well. Unfortunately, December, I haven't finished a book. <laughs> Uh, it's just been very chaotic over here, but that's okay. I do have plans to squeeze in quite a few holiday romance novellas. Um, I'm still hoping 
delusionally to hit my Goodreads goal. I need to stop rambling. I'm so happy I had a great reading month in November and also got some really fun reading vlogs out for you. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know and I will see you in my next one. Bye!